Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about six pieces of gear that I find essential for woodland photography. So I haven't done any woodland photography for quite a while now, so I thought it'd be good to get out and do some. Although it is a little bit uninspiring this morning, the light's pretty flat, it's pretty overcast, which I knew it was going to be, but it is going to be really warm later today, so I thought it'd be good to get out early. But what I want to talk about today is six pieces of gear that I find essential for woodland photography. And they're things that I feel I, I really couldn't do without when I come to a woodland area. So let's head on and we'll talk about the first item. Okay, so the first bit of essential equipment you're going to need, and this might seem obvious, but it's your camera. It doesn't really matter what brand you go for these days, any of the major brands made in the last five to six years, maybe even older than that, are going to be perfectly adequate for any kind of woodland photography. And I don't think it really matters whether you've got crop sensor or full frame, you can still get good results. Preferably though, if you can, get something that's weather sealed, because it is quite a dirty, mucky, quite humid often environment and you don't want stuff getting in your camera and breaking it. And I'm gonna go straight into point two now, which is lenses. So I find a 24 to 70 millimeter perfect for woodland. Ideally, you want something with a bit of zoom so that you can pan out and get a big wide shot with a big tree perhaps, but you can also zoom in, compress the scene a little bit, and also try and eliminate some of the chaos that's going on in the woodland with all the branches and leaves. By zooming in, you can get a smaller area and try and eliminate some of that. And some people like a longer telephoto. I've also got a 24 to 200 millimeter with me if I want to go longer. And I've had the least success with a wide angle lens. I do use it sometimes, particularly when there's like a large tree or something and I'm quite close to it and I need to fit the whole tree in. But most of the time I find a zoom lens between 24 to 70 the best. Okay, so here's an example of where I might use the wide angle lens. We've got this composition here with the two trees, either side of this central one just slightly behind. And that makes a nice composition with those three being right in the center of the frame. And you've got these ferns at the bottom, which are creating a nice frame for my scene, with the three trees and then these ferns here at the bottom. And I'm obviously going portrait for this. If I were using the 24 to 70 millimeter lens, I would have to come back to a roundabout here. And you can see we've got the leaves on this branch coming into the scene and blocking out the free trees that I want as my focal subject. But if I take the shot from here with the 24 to 70, I would just end up with a smaller area of the free trees and not the whole thing with the ferns at the bottom. So I really do need the wide angle for this shot. And this is one of the rare occasions when I will get out the 14 to 30 millimeter to take that shot. And while we're here, let's talk about essential item number three, and that's a tripod. So I recently made a video asking, do you actually need a tripod? I'll put a link up top to that one if you've not seen it and wanna go back and watch it. But, spoiler alert, I came to the conclusion that most of the time, you don't actually need one. Woodland is one of those areas where you can get away without it, but it is going to make life a lot easier. It's quite low light under the canopy of the trees, and you're going to be using quite long shutter speeds most of the time, unless you put your ISO up really high, or your aperture really wide, or both. So, handheld, you're going to get quite a lot of motion blur. So it really does help to have the tripod, just get your camera nice and stable, and you can get that nice sharp shot. Well, the clouds have cleared now. We have got some quite strong sunlight coming through in patches, through the canopy, and creating some nice dappled light on the ground and the trees and things. 
and that can cause some challenges. It can create some dark, strong shadows and some quite bright, blown out highlights. But as long as you can control those, it can create quite a nice dynamic looking scene. So anyway, we'll talk about essential kit piece four, and that is an L bracket. So an L bracket is this red thing here. And this goes on the bottom of your camera. It replaces the normal plate, which attaches to your tripod. And basically this allows you to turn your camera from portrait to landscape really easily. And that's quite useful in woodland because a lot of scenes require a vertical format because you've got obviously the tall trees and things, but sometimes you do need the wide scene as well. And you can use a ball head such as this one and you can release that and just turn it on its side. But the problem with that is you've got all of the weight now hanging to one side and that's not going to be as stable as it is when you've got it directly over the top of your tripod. So by being able to use the L bracket and just turn that around quickly, it can be really useful. So I definitely recommend getting an L bracket in general, but also for woodland as well. Okay, so next up is a circular polarizer filter. I use these all the time for woodland photography. They're great for removing reflection and glare on shiny objects, so they work really well when it's wet, so you've got all the water on the leaves causing shine and glare. They'll really help to remove that, but they'll also help to saturate the colors in your scene. So you'll see an effect even on dry days like this. So do yourself a favor, go out, get a circular polarizer filter, they work really well for woodland photography. You don't always have to shoot really big wide open spaces with woodland. I found this really nice close up scene here of a cobweb on some sapling branches on the side of this tree. And when the light shines from behind that, it's backlighting it, it looks really nice. So you could consider bringing a macro lens with you. I haven't got one today, but the 24 to 70 millimeter is so versatile, I'm getting a good close up shot with that anyway. So I think we can talk about the final bit of essential kit for today's video, and that's any kind of cleaning tool that you might need to keep your camera and lenses clean. Like I said before, woodland is quite a dirty, dusty environment. It's often humid, it can be raining, so you really have got to keep your gear nice and clean. I bring a lot of towels and cloths and things like that, but I do find they get greasy quite quickly, and then you're just smearing grease around your lens basically, so that's no good. So most of the time these days I'm using one of these lens pens. And I should point out, I talk about these a lot. I don't get paid anything to endorse these or anything. It's just, I really do think they're great. You've got a carbon, I think some kind of carbon based tip on the end there. You just use that to wipe the grease off of your lens or dirt or whatever it is. And inside the cap, you've got something which refreshes that tip. So you don't have to worry about it getting greasy and unusable. And then on the other end, you've got this really handy brush, which you can use to wipe away dust and dirt and things. So these are great, I really do recommend them. So they're my six essential pieces of gear which I really need when I go out and do woodland photography. But if you've got your own tips, put them down in the comments below, let us know what works for you. I'm going to wrap this up now, it's been a bit of a whirlwind tour this morning but I think I've got some images I can use now. But it's going to get quite warm later, potentially up to about 40 degrees, so I do want to get back before it gets too warm. And all that's left to say really is thanks a lot for watching, as always, and if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you want to do so, you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.